And our passage here in the Gospel of Luke is really like f- four different statements, right? Did you catch the four different statements? It would have helped if I would have started in the right place to begin with. But, you know, things happen, I guess. So, But there's four statements. Do not be afraid. Sell all your possessions. Be ready for what's going to come. And if you know when someone's going to break into your house, you're not going to let it happen. So it's like four distinct statements. Do they really have anything to do with each other? There's one here that, I, that has caught my attention, and, and it's one that we've probably heard several different times, and we've probably heard it wrong before, right? For where your heart is, there your treasure will be. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be. I have two people up here that are, that are catching on. Have you ever heard that, though? Has anyone ever told you, I can't go to church yet because my life's not right. Have you ever heard that? I got to get my heart right before I can go to church. I got to, I got to be right in the right standing with God before I'm able to go to worship. Right? Because where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Is that what it says? Go back and look at it again. Verse 34 is the verse that I'm talking about. Jesus says, give alms, make purses for yourselves that will not wear out and build up a treasure in heaven for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Not where your heart is, then your treasure will be there. Right? It's the exact opposite of the way that we think about it. We have to get our lives right. I'm going to come. I'm going to learn who God is. God's going to come in and everything's going to be good. I'm going to get my life right. And then I'm going to start giving all of my treasures to the church or to God. Right. And treasures here don't again, it's like last week when the pastor starts talking about treasures, we all automatically think that we're talking about money. Right. I got my microphone in my pocket, so I can't get my wallet out real fast here. But we all think about when when the pastor starts talking about treasures, it's all about money. But it's not all about money. But, I mean, it's about the things that you treasure. What do you think about during the week? What do you think about during the day? What's that one thing that you can't wait home to do something with? Jack, I push a lot of buttons here. Is it your golf clubs? Is it your sailboat? He's not here. Is it your... <laughs> is it your... Motorcycle? Is it your fishing boat? Is it... Right? What is the thing that you treasure most? Where is that? And how does that work? To be a part of your life. See, because Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And it's interesting to me, um, the ways that we think about this, right? Because statistically talking, we talk about this in council meetings, about how you know we need to get more money and we need to get more people. If we had more people in church, then we would have what? Does it work that way? No, butts in the pews does not equal dollars in the plates. That's what I tell the council all the time. Butts in the pews does not equal dollars in the plate, right? But no church has, no church really has any financial problems. It's just the difference of getting it out of your pockets into these little shiny things that gets passed around here. But that's a whole nother sermon for a whole nother day. But it's about where our treasure is, right? It's not about us coming and getting right with God. And then everything just magically happening in our lives. It's about us preparing ourselves in our hearts for what God has in store for us. Mark Allen Powell, who is a professor at um, Trinity Seminary, wrote this book, Giving to God the Bible's Good News About Living a Generous Life. And he actually wrote a whole chapter on, well, not this verse that we have this morning, but its counterpart in Matthew, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 21. And one quote, there's a couple of quotes in here that I'm probably going to use this morning, but one quote for certain. It's on page 55, starts on 55, ends on 56. Give from the heart, people say, right? Have you heard that before? You're supposed to give from, from your heart. You're supposed to give what you think you should give. 
Mark Allen Powell has a little bit different take. Give from the heart, people say, but Jesus seemed to speak of something else. Give where you want your heart to be and let your heart catch up. Don't just give to things you care about. Give to things you want to care about. Don't decide the amount you're giving by how much you care, but by how much you want to care. Ask yourself, if I were the sort of person that I really would like to be, then what would I do? How would I spend my money, my time, and everything else? Then do what you would do if you were that kind of person. Put your treasure where you want your heart to be, and Jesus promises your heart will go there. Right? It's not the other way around. We don't sit and think how much I really want to give this place. If you want, if you want to care about something, then give to it. And, and give here again is not about money. It's not always about money. It's about time. Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your talents? Right? Every one of us has something that we can do. Where do we spend that? What do we do with that? And if we want to have our heart be somewhere, the way to do that is to give time to that place or that thing. Right? When you're first starting to meet somebody, those of you that are married, right? When you first started to talk with the person that you're now married to, right? How much time did you invest in this person? Right? There was a lot, probably a lot more time invested in them when you were getting to know them and learning about them and wanting them to be in your life than we do now. And I'm not saying that that's good or bad. I'm just saying that that's probably the way that it is. Because some things, you know, as life moves on, other things come in. Children take the, some of that spot. But our jobs take some of that spot. Different things come in and out and take those different spots away. But those things that are truly treasures of our hearts are the place that we place our time. And Jesus says to make purses and build up an unfailing treasure. You know, the most interesting part to that me, to me is, and it actually is, is clear in the English. Um, usually I have to go to the Greek to get us the clearness of this, but it's actually very clear here in the English. Build, you can make purses, make for yourself purses and build up an unfailing treasure. So each one of us can make a purse, right? Guys, we'll make a purse. A bag to hold your treasure, right? That's all, that's all it is. This is a bag to hold your treasure. But how many treasures are there? How many treasures are there in heaven? An, an unfailing treasure. One. Each of us has a purse, but each of us shares of the one unfailing treasure. And isn't that the way that it's supposed to be here? Because Jesus says to give alms, to give to the poor, to give to the needy, right? That's what it is to give alms. To give to those who are in need. If we have something that someone else needs, then what should we do? Give it to them. Because that would, that's what Jesus tells us to do. To be good stewards and good managers of everything that He's placed in our lives. And here's the kicker. All four of these four little sections here are not four individual sections. They all go together. As, and it's even... Even shown to us in, in Hebrews, our reading from Hebrews this morning. Do not be afraid. Is there a lot to be afraid of here in this world today? I can think of a few things that are coming up and a lot of things that are happening around the world that there's, a, there's need to, that we could be afraid. But Jesus says, do not be afraid. Make yourselves purses, give away stuff that's been given to you, and build up a treasure in heaven, which is opposite of most of our thinking, right? To build up a treasure, I have to what? Hold on to everything that's mine and not let anybody else have it. But to get treasure in heaven, you have to give to those who are in need. Be prepared as if you're a slave waiting for a master to return. You're waiting and constantly looking for them, doing what needs to be done around the house, around the estate, making sure everything is done and cleared. So when the master comes home, he will be happy to find you diligently working. Now, can the slaves get anything by diligently working? We have to talk about that for a minute, right? It's not about doing something so that you get something in heaven, right? We've been given that already. 
It's God's good favor to give you the kingdom. That's what it says in verse 32. Right? Do not be afraid. God's given you everything. Give away everything that you have to those who are in need and store up a treasure in heaven. Be prepared when Jesus is coming back. Be prepared for when your master is coming back because nothing is going to happen. Because if, if you knew when Jesus was going to come back, you would do what you were supposed to be doing. Right? That's what last part. And Hebrews tells us, did you catch in Hebrews? What is Hebrews about? Hebrews chapter 11 is what is known as the... Does anybody know? It's the something chapter of the Bible. The first three verses. Faith chapter of the Bible. Right. Because it lays out for us how all of the people of old had faith. Right. And this section this morning is about Abraham. Because the Genesis reading is, is God telling Abram that his descendants are going to outnumber the stars in the sky. Right. A man who is probably a hundred years old. And his wife is ninety. And his descendants are going to outnumber the stars in the sky. And we get a retelling of that story in Hebrews because it says that Abram and his sons were in the land, looking at the land that they were going to receive. And it was accounted to them as faith because they were faithful to leave what they had known and go where God was leading them. And then verse... 13, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob all went, left their homeland, took all their wives and all of their possessions and went away. And in verse 13, it says, and all of these died in faith without receiving the promise. They were told that these things were going to happen, but none of them saw it before they died. Because they believed in the promise. They stored up their treasure where? In heaven. They believed what God had told them. They had no fear and they followed through on what God told them to do. So go and believe that God has called each and every one of us. That he's gifted us and called us. And he's once and it is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. And to quote Mark Allen Powell two more times. It doesn't matter whether we're talking about the widow with her penny or Zacchaeus giving away half of his fortune. People who renounce their treasure as a spiritual sacrifice to God discover that they are transformed within, drawn closer to God in the manner that helps them to become more spiritual people. Simply put, stewardship is the biblical path to spirituality. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And a little story he uses to end out this chapter. I want to love God with all my heart. A woman in my church once told me. You can't make your heart feel what it won't. Our popular culture insists. Oh yes, you can, Jesus responds. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So where... Is your treasure?